Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today we're continuing our analysis of Fallout Van Buren by finally taking a look at what the developers had planned for one of the franchise's most enduring staples, the Brotherhood of Steel. That means today we'll be taking a look at design document number 9, which covers the Maxon Bunker. But before you get too excited, I should warn you, this document ends up leaving a lot to the imagination. While the document is a full 23 pages long, it's laid out pretty inefficiently, and it ends up filling a lot of that space with redundant and often incomplete information. But that said, the document still offers a lot of interesting things to talk about. So let's get started. Originally inspired by the Guardians, a tech-worshipping cult featured in the original Wasteland game back in 1988, the Brotherhood of Steel has been present in every single Fallout game in the series, and Van Buren was no exception. Now, we're definitely not delving too deeply into the Brotherhood in this video. Their fictional history is so long and complex that it would take at least an hour or two to cover everything. Instead, we'll just be focusing on the role they were intended to play in Van Buren. Although the individual interpretation of the Brotherhood has varied from game to game and from developer to developer, they're generally portrayed as an elitist organization that has taken it upon themselves to protect humanity from the evils of pre-war technology, whether other people like it or not. They generally took it upon themselves to scour the wastes in search of dangerous pre-war tech, and if it turned out that someone else had found it before them, then they had no compunction about making use of their power armor and advanced weaponry to simply take that technology away by force. So, knowing that, it's no surprise that the Brotherhood eventually ended up coming into conflict with the New California Republic sometime in the late 2240s. Although the exact reasons for this conflict are never explored in the leaked documents, Chris Avalone mentions in the Fallout Bible that he believed the NCR and the Brotherhood of Steel had pre-existing ties that predated the events of the first game. The two organizations maintained an uneasy truce, and at some point following the events of Fallout 2, this truce came to an end. It's heavily implied that the Brotherhood was unhappy with the NCR's rapid expansion, as well as their accumulation of pre-war technology, and it's possible, though never confirmed, that the NCR's decision to claim Hoover Dam acted as the catalyst for the conflict between the two factions. But regardless of the exact cause, the two factions officially went to war sometime in the late 2240s. Although the Brotherhood had the advantage of elite training and superior technology, the war ended up dragging on for years. Individually, a Brotherhood soldier was vastly superior to their NCR counterparts, but the NCR had the benefit of vastly greater manpower. For every squad they lost, there was another to take its place, but the Brotherhood's strict recruitment and training policies meant that they had a much harder time replacing their losses. Morale ended up plummeting on both sides, and the Brotherhood suffered another heavy blow as many of their scribes and younger soldiers began deserting their posts. The war slowly ground to a halt, but it never truly ended, instead leading to an extended Cold War between the Brotherhood and the NCR. In Van Buren, the player would have been able to encounter the remnants of the Brotherhood of Steel at the Maxon Bunker. By the time the player arrived in 2256, this detachment would be in dire straits. They had lost contact with the rest of the Brotherhood back in California, and they were facing a steadily growing number of problems in the form of supply and personnel shortages. But we'll come back to that in just a moment. First, let's spend a bit of time talking about the Maxon Bunker, as well as the backstory surrounding its unfortunate inhabitants. Maxon Bunker was originally designed to serve as a secret bunker for a pre-war senator named Todd Peterson. He worked out a deal with Poseidon Oil and the Enclave to begin construction on the bunker in 2067. When war broke out ten years later, Peterson and his family were killed before they could ever reach the bunker. His only surviving relative was Corporal Ben Schilling, a soldier who served under Captain Roger Maxson, the founder of the Brotherhood of Steel. Schilling mentioned the existence of the secret bunker to Maxson, and its location was entered into the Brotherhood's official records. The bunker sat unused for over 150 years, until the year 2231, when Jeremy Maxson finally decided that the Brotherhood should start expanding eastward out of California. He decided it was finally time to put the hidden bunker to use, 
sending a small expeditionary force led by Andrea Brixley to secure the bunker and use it as their base of operations. Brixley succeeded in her mission and spent the next 10 years exploring the region around the bunker, building relationships with many of the surrounding tribes. Ten years later, as tensions began rising between the NCR and the Brotherhood, the bunker was officially named the Maxon Bunker, in reference to the Brotherhood's original founder. The remaining members of the expeditionary team were declared elders, and Brixley herself was promoted to the rank of general and given official command of the outpost. Their focus quickly shifted from exploration to open warfare, and as the conflict waged on, their supplies and morale rapidly dwindled. Suffering a shortage of personnel due to both battlefield casualties and desertion, Brixley grew increasingly desperate to find some advantage against the NCR, and she decided to allow her soldiers to start using the experimental pre-war technology known as the Stealth Boy. This allowed the remaining Brotherhood soldiers to easily infiltrate NCR territory, granting them a significant advantage over their adversaries. But they soon discovered that prolonged use of Stealth Boy technology came with dangerous side effects, including paranoia, delusions, and eventual schizophrenia. Brixley quickly ordered her men to cease using Stealth Boys, but the damage had already been done. Already suffering from the side effects, her men became paranoid and hostile when the order was handed down, and they quickly decided that Brixley was somehow working to bring the Brotherhood down from the inside. They deserted soon afterwards, taking the remaining stealth boys with them and creating a more extreme offshoot of the Brotherhood, known as the Circle of Steel. They ran off and established their own outpost in the Colorado Wastes, where they began raiding NCR caravans and plotting against General Brixley but we'll get back to them in just a moment. Now, the documents never really specify how the player was supposed to discover the location of Max and Bunker. It's possible that the player might have been able to learn about it from Isaac Gant, the former Brotherhood scribe that the player could meet in Mesa Verde, but otherwise it just seems like the player would have had to stumble across the well-concealed bunker at random. The document only lists one way for the player to get inside the bunker, the main entrance was a standard vault tech security door, and tampering with the computer at the entrance would quickly draw out two Brotherhood soldiers, who would end up forcibly escorting the player back into the bunker at gunpoint. The player would then be escorted to the medical room for disease screening, where they would be locked into dialogue long enough to learn basic plot information about the location. Afterwards, assuming they had cooperated, they would be allowed to explore the first level of the bunker, giving them the opportunity to meet some of the other prominent NPCs. The player would quickly discover the bunker was woefully undermanned. Almost all of the Brotherhood specialists had either died or deserted, and as a result their equipment was all slowly falling into disrepair. Even worse, one of the scribes who had deserted, an elder named Isaac Gant, had even gone so far as to lock down the armory before he left, depriving the remaining soldiers of their most powerful armor and weaponry. And, as if things weren't already bad enough, now their commanding officer, General Brixley, had fallen gravely ill, and their medical officer was incapable of diagnosing or treating her condition. By speaking to various NPCs and performing small side quests around the bunker, the player would be able to slowly gain access to more of the facility, eventually allowing them to discover that General Brixley was being poisoned. This, in turn, would lead the player right into the middle of the power struggle between the Brotherhood of Steel and the Circle of Steel, presumably giving them the opportunity to pick sides. The bunker was planned to feature a total of 11 prominent named NPCs, though most of them were simply intended to help or hinder the player's investigation with clues or red herrings. Although the document doesn't go into much detail on how the investigation was intended to play out, it's easy to see how the different NPCs were intended to get involved. For example, Tracy Niels and Jerry Corsetti were both veteran members of the Brotherhood, who felt that Andrea Brixley was leading them in the wrong direction. They both felt that Brixley was too lax and disorganized, and felt that Tracy would do a better job as the bunker's commander. This was likely intended to muddy the waters during the player's investigation, while also providing the player with more narrative about the current state of the Brotherhood. Ultimately, the player would be able to gather enough clues to point them towards the bunker's quartermaster, a man named Devon Hill. 
Devon was one of the Brotherhood soldiers afflicted with paranoid delusions as a result of using Stealth Boy technology. When the rest of his teammates had deserted, he had stayed behind at the bunker to act as a spy for the newly founded Circle of Steel. Like the rest of the Circle, Devon had become convinced that Brixley had some sinister ulterior motive behind her decision to discontinue the use of Stealth Boys, and as a result, he had recently begun sneaking poison into Brixley's food in an attempt to kill her. Again, the details here are scarce, but once the player knew who was behind the poisoning, they would be able to confront Devon. Once the plot had been uncovered and Devon had presumably been killed, Brixley would begin recovering, and she would request the player's assistance in tracking down Devon's outside contacts. Again, the details here are scarce. In fact, they're almost non-existent. But the document vaguely states that the player would have to travel to the NCR outpost at Hoover Dam to continue their investigation. From there, it was possible to find clues that would theoretically point the player towards the Circle of Steel, at which point Brixley would request the player's assistance in destroying them. Ultimately, this would lead the player to the ruins of a small village that the Circle of Steel had taken over. They attacked and conquered the village due to its remote and well-defended position, and the presence of crops and a pre-war water evaporator that allowed them to remain reasonably self-sufficient. And, as always, the details here are scarce. The document mentions that the player would have to lay siege to the village and wipe out the Circle of Steel. It also mentions that the player would have to fight at least 12 members of the Circle, and that they would be strategically positioned around the village. Some would be guarding the only entrance, others would be patrolling the fences, and some would be stationed on guard towers that gave them a clear line of sight over the surrounding area. Once the Circle of Steel had been neutralized, the player would be able to move on to the final stage of the Max and Bunker questline. With equipment, personnel, and morale at an all-time low, and unable to contact their superiors back in California, Brixley would finally come to the decision to broker a truce with the NCR. The player would presumably need to get in touch with one of the few remaining NCR representatives in the area, most likely Governor Dodge at the Hoover Dam outpost, they would then need to work out some sort of mutually beneficial peace treaty between the two factions. The document also mentions that the player would theoretically be able to establish a supply line between Max and Bunker and Hoover Dam. Beyond that, Max and Bunker had a number of small and exceedingly simple side quests to offer. The vast majority of these side quests involved maintaining and repairing the various devices that the Brotherhood soldiers simply didn't have the training to handle. These were very basic quests, providing the player with a small amount of potential loot and experience points, and potentially providing the player with earlier access to the bunker's lower levels during their investigation into who was trying to kill General Brixley. Although it's not mentioned in the Max and Bunker design document, we also know that the player could establish a more long-term solution for the Brotherhood's maintenance issues by brokering an alliance between the Brotherhood and the Cypher tribe at Mesa Verde. This would at least temporarily take care of the Brotherhood's maintenance issues, while also potentially helping the Cypher tribe with some of the problems that they were facing. The player could also take on a quest to restore the Brotherhood's access to their own armory. As I mentioned before, Elder Scribe Isaac Gant had locked down the armory before deserting, and once the player had resolved the main storyline for the Max and Bunker, Brixley would offer the player one last side quest to track down Isaac and convince him to give them the access codes. We know that Isaac Gant could be found living in Mesa Verde, but the document implies that convincing him to hand over the access codes would require the player to jump through a number of hoops visiting multiple locations. Unfortunately, as with most of the document, no significant details are given on how the player was intended to complete this quest. But, given that it was likely intended to be how the player would gain access to Brotherhood equipment, it's probably safe to assume it wasn't intended to be easy. Sadly, it seems that the development of the Max and Bunker design document was a relatively low priority. Although the developers obviously wanted the Brotherhood to be featured in the game, the design document clearly states that this was intended to be an entirely optional location, with no real bearing on the game's main storyline. As a result, it appears that this document was far less fleshed out than most of the other leaked design documents. Fortunately, the bulk of the content planned for this location did end up making it into some of the later games, most notably in Fallout New Vegas. For example, though Max and Bunker never ends up appearing in New Vegas, 
That game does at least confirm and expand upon the war between the Brotherhood and the NCR. Likewise, Fallout New Vegas also reintroduced the Circle of Steel, though the updated version of the Circle was essentially portrayed as a hardcore internal affairs division that operated within the Brotherhood's ranks, as opposed to the mentally imbalanced conspiracy theorists that would have been featured in Van Buren. Ultimately, it really feels like Van Buren was intended to deliberately minimize the impact that the Brotherhood could have in future storylines. For example, it would have provided the writers with an easy explanation for why the Brotherhood couldn't help fight off Caesar's Legion in Interplay's cancelled version of Fallout 4. And obviously, this is the exact explanation that Obsidian ended up using during the events of Fallout New Vegas. But of course, while we may not know exactly what the future holds for the Brotherhood of Steel, or the Fallout franchise in general, one thing is certain. Given how massively popular the Brotherhood is with most Fallout fans, you can be sure that Bethesda will continue giving them a prominent role in all of the Fallout games that are released in the foreseeable future. That covers pretty much everything that we know about the Max and Bunker, as well as the version of the Brotherhood that was intended to appear in Van Buren. So next week, we'll be delving into design document number 10, which covers the small post-apocalyptic settlement known as Jericho. But for now, this is Retcon Raider, signing off. Thanks for listening. Oh, and remember, although I do love talking about Fallout Van Buren, you can check out all 800 pages of the leaked design documents for yourself by visiting the fan-run wikis. Links are in the description.